Welcome back everybody and today we're taking another look at thermal data processing in Metashape. The difference of course from the previous video is that in this instance we are using radiometric data and that's where the thermal images contain actual temperatures rather than just the grayscale images we took a look at in the previous video. So this is a sample data set courtesy of PIX4D. You can download it from their website for yourself to test with. And it has been loaded here already into Metashape. You'll see we have a total of 152 radiometric images. And when we take a look at them visually, well, honestly, not too much to see. They're a little bit drab and dreary, but this is expected with radiometric thermal data. It's really what's in the background that we want to dig into a little bit later. But to help the visualization, we are able to use the contrast and brightness adjustment tool within Metashape. Just estimate the values and apply it. And that should give you a really good result, actually, where visually now we can start to see what's going on within these images. Keep in mind, it doesn't matter what contrast and brightness settings we apply. It's not going to affect the actual temperature values. Moving on to alignment now, we're going to stay with the highest accuracy setting. And that's because with thermal images in general, the resolution is lower and the pixel differentiation is lower than what we would expect in RGB imagery. So we're also going to put up the key point limit and the tie point limit to much higher values than what we would use with RGB imagery. Allow that to run. The entire process shouldn't take too long at all. And when it's finished, you should have a set of key points representative of the thermal data. I'm going to go about cleaning up all the messy and superfluous points as well by selecting them and then also using the gradual selection tool just so that the data set is cleaner and if we go into model production it will produce a better 3d model we don't need that for our mosaicing app but we do need a digital elevation model so that'll be the next step in this process we're going to produce it from the depth maps because the type points won't have enough definition and we're going to leave the quality setting on high. There's no real benefit in going to highest in this case. So we use step maps as the source, the quality high, and we allow that to process. Again, it's a relatively fast process because of the lower resolution. Then we want to take a look at our digital elevation model and make sure that it is for the most part sensible and what we anticipated based on the area and the data that we have in hand. Keep in mind, again, it's not going to be as good as a data set you would have from RGB data, but if you have an RGB dem, import that and use it, you'll probably get a better result. Moving on to the ortho mosaic production now, you're going to build it from the digital elevation model, but the blending mode is something we want to pay careful attention to here. I'm going to show you what happens with all three of the different blending modes we have in Metashape because they will give us a different mosaic. And when it comes to thermal data, a different mosaic means different temperatures. So it's very important and we want to pay close attention to that. Visually, the standard blending mode for radiometric data should yield an ortho mosaic that looks very similar to a non-radiometric data set, as you see here on screen. And what you can do from here is go and adjust those contrast and brightness settings again, just to maximize the visual that you have on screen. Again, it doesn't matter what settings you put here, it isn't going to affect the actual thermal data. Once that's done, we start to have a look at the actual value. So look at the bottom right hand corner of the screen as you move the cursor around your image. And you'll see it's telling us about an elevation in meters. So obviously it's not referring to the thermal data yet. So we go into the raster calculator and then we want to select the first band B1 as the band we want to analyze because that will allow us to apply a color palette to the image. And when we do that, we still see a grayscale image, but now when you have a look at the bottom right hand side, we're starting to see an index value which is a temperature value of sorts. This value is in centi Kelvin. It's not yet in degrees Celsius. And we will take a look at that conversion process a little bit later on, how we go from centi Kelvin to degrees Celsius so that we can analyze the data. 
But first, I'm going to go ahead and rename the image, just keeping with the mosaicing blending mode that we used before. Then I'm going to create the second option, which is the average blending model. And as we wait for this to process, I just want to say a very big thank you to everyone who likes the videos, everyone who subscribed to the channel, and an especially big thanks to all my supporters on Buy Me A Coffee. Your help is really, really appreciated. So once that second mosaic is finished, we can then take a look at it and analyze the differences between the default blending mode and the average blending mode. And keep an eye here in this example on the eastern side of the data. And there's a distinct line that hasn't been nicely mosaic with the average blending model. And that means, of course, that there will be a temperature difference in that area. And later on, once we've got all three of our mosaics completed, we're going to look at what those differences are across all of the images. So rename the second mosaic in line with the blending mode again, and then I'm going to create the third, which has the blending mode disabled. So really what we're doing here is keeping those values as they are with regard to the imported image, no balancing, no blending at all. Immediately what we see is, well, an image that does not look impressive. It's obvious that it hasn't been blended, but this now also points to a difference in the thermal data that has been captured. It's evident that in the various flight lines, there are distinct differences from one image to the next, and especially from one flight line to the next. So now we want to take a look at those index values again. Keep those in mind always when we are reviewing this data. So the default mosaic definitely looks the best, but the mosaic in which we had no blending is probably technically the most accurate one. How do we get around this? Well, when collecting your data, you want to keep your flight lines nice and close together. You don't want to fly a racetrack formation. You want to fly consecutive lines. Also fly the job as quickly as is possible. And if you can fly at night, if that's an option for you, go ahead and do that because you won't have the influence of the sun on the sensor. And that's possibly what is affected this data set that was captured in the middle of the day. We're now going to take a look at how we determine the actual temperature values. So we go back into the raster calculator and here, instead of just looking at band B1, we're going to apply a formula. So to go from centi Kelvin to degrees Celsius, it is the band we're looking at. So in this case, B1 divided by 100. And then we're going to subtract the, the Kelvin constant value of 273.15. So this is the standard, I believe, for FLIR cameras, but if you have a non-FLIR device, the setting might be different to what you're seeing here on the screen. So when we take a look at the actual temperatures achieved, minus 35 or so degrees Celsius up to 26 or so degrees Celsius, and these values are in line with what PIX4D achieved when they processed their own data. So we know we are on the right track here. So once that's done, we can go back into our data and now pay close attention again to the bottom right hand side of your screen and that index value. And now when we move the cursor across the screen, instead of a peculiar centi Kelvin value, we are seeing the temperatures in degrees Celsius. Looking at this car that I'm highlighting on screen at the moment, we can see that the boot of that car is at about 38 degrees Celsius. And this data set was captured in the middle of the day with the sun shining. So this is a temperature that makes enough logical sense to us to decide that we've done our processing correctly. Again, we want to look at the difference now in the various mosaicing methods, because when we zoom in, we consider the temperatures in the non-blended mosaic, we can see a stark difference from one image or one flight line to the next and the images that overlap. And it only makes sense that when these temperatures are blended, that the temperature values would be adjusted so that those temperatures can be blended. So this is something to keep in mind when doing your analysis. A blended mosaic starts to deviate away from actual valid temperatures. It's good visually, but you might want to do your scientific thermal analysis 
based on a non-adjusted mosaic or perhaps just the raw data itself in something like Fleur Tools. But with that information in mind, we have now created our various mosaics and done effectively all we are able to do within a Metashape. Of course, we can go ahead and create contour maps. We can adjust the color palette as well to something that is visually appealing and adjust the top and bottom end of that too. We can also go ahead and create a 3D model if that is something that you need. But to do any real thermal data analysis, we would want to take our data set now and export it into a third party tool, such as a GIS application. And that's what we are about to do. So with the default auth mosaic selected, I'm going to export it so that I can import it into Global Mapper. And just because Global Mapper is my tool of choice, you can of course use QGIS, you could use ArcGIS or, or any other tool really that you're comfortable using. An important thing to keep in mind when exporting a radiometric image now is when we get to the raster transform section, it gives us the option to export either the index color or index value. Now color would be whatever color is on screen and the index value would be the temperature value. So that's the one we want to export. I'm also going to export the non-blended mosaic, the actual or the true thermal temperatures so that we can analyze both and compare them in our GIS software. So we use very similar settings to go for the rest of transform with the index value. But in this case, I'm going to disallow any TIFF compression. I want to keep my pixel values as pristine and as close to the original image values as possible. So I then select my data and I'm going to import it into Global Map. And when we flick between the two images here, we can see the, the difference between the adjusted or the blended and the non-adjusted or non-blended. And in Global Mapper, look at the bottom left-hand corner, and that is where we'll see our temperature value. It does refer to it as height or elevation in this case, but that's just because that's how I have imported it, but I know that the index value is a temperature. You also have the ability in any good GIS package to transition between one color palette and the next, just to aid your own visualization. I'm going to now edit the range of temperature values to negative 60 up to 47. And I use negative 60 purely because I know that for a FLIR camera, certainly if the Zenus XT, that negative 60 is the lower limit. It cannot record temperatures outside of that range. Here I'm showing you how you could just look at a defined temperature range, for example, between 10 and 20 degrees, or just positive 0 to 100 degrees Celsius, as an example, just highlighting how a thermal data set becomes very valuable and versatile when you are using it within the correct tool. I'm going to reset though to negative 60 up to the 47 degrees Celsius range so that we can do some additional analysis of this data. Another cool trick is to look at your thermal data within three dimensions. And this is a very nice analysis and viewing tool. If you're looking for particular areas of problems such as solar panels, you might want to view that in 3D and where you see spikes there might be an issue on solar panels. Going back to the same car that we referenced earlier, we're going to take a look at how our processed values compare to the actual raw data within FLIR tools. So I've opened FLIR tools here on the right hand side of the screen, and I'm adjusting the color palette to something representative of what we are using within Global Mapper as well. I'm then going to analyze the temperature on that car by using the temperature picker tool which is located at the top left in FLIR tools and you can see here FLIR tools has 38.9 degrees celsius and when we go back to global map for our process data you can see how we are very very close to that range so our processing seems to have at least in this region worked quite well 
This emissivity value is something very interesting. Emissivity is the ability of a body to radiate heat or its thermal radiation capability. And there are emissivity tables that you can reference before you go out and capture your data. But just take note of how drastically that emissivity value can affect your final temperature. So look up the correct emissivity value for the region that you are covering. I'm going to take a look at another area now to highlight the difference of those two mosaicing modes, the blended mode versus the non-adjusted mode. So I'm placing two temperature spots over here, and we'll see for number one, it's at about nine degrees Celsius, and number two is minus four degrees Celsius. But when we look here in our data and global mapper, this is the blended mosaic, we see a very stark contrast. We see, in fact, something we might say is an error because those temperature values have been drastically adjusted. However, looking at the non-adjusted data, we can see close to that container, we're still nine degrees Celsius. But over here in this purple region, we see a big difference. But that's because it's on the next flight line. So I'm now going to open up the image which actually covers that flight line. And we're going to take a look at the temperature value that Fleur Tools tells us within that specific region now. So we can go ahead and use our temperature picker again. And when we place it again next to the container and then also in that other region, we see now that the, the region farther away from the container is far more closely aligned to the value we have in Global Mapper. But there at the container, again, we see a very large difference. But obviously that is from a different image. But this just goes to show how the blending mode within Metashape will affect those temperature values. Thank you so much for watching. Keep this in mind when doing any thermal processing. And if you have any ideas or suggestions for the next videos, by all means, let me know in the comments. And I look forward to chatting to you again.